All right, so you've gone out and you bought your uh, Hobby Zone Super Mini Cub EPP foam plane and uh, uh, demonstrated that the ACT technology or anti-crash technology doesn't exactly uh, prevent crashes in all instances, and uh, it does help, uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, you've gone out with your brand new plane and you've uh, smashed it to the ground and uh, perhaps have ended up with something like this. Um, bound to happen, uh, ear damage may not be this severe, um, but busting the nose cone off of this is actually pretty common. So you can go and buy the, the foam fuselage, um, I think it's somewhere around $5. Um, if you want to buy it with the actual ESC and, and electronics in it, then you're talking about uh, yeah, more like $30. But uh, uh, these foam planes will, uh, you know, take quite a beating and uh, are, are very easily repaired. So we have three options. Uh, the first one, uh, the easiest one, is your your standard clear packing tape. And, well, it doesn't have to be clear; it can be any color, but uh, clear is good for the plane if you want the decals to show through. So um, packing tape has the advantage that it's very cheap. Uh, it's very easy to do in the field, assuming it's dry and, and wet. Um, you can see here on this plane, especially on the Super Mini Cup, this, this uh, thin section within the tail actually takes quite a bit of abuse. Uh, and it's a good idea, even if you haven't sustained any damage here, to actually reinforce that with some clear packing tape. So it may not actually show up in the video here, but there is a crease line here because this tail actually bends left and right. Um, and, and doing a nice spiral maneuver and smashing it to the ground will will give you these crease lines if you want that. It's uh, you know good aesthetics in my mind, but uh, give it some structural stability. Add a small piece of that packing tape. So packing tape, unlike uh, the glues, actually adds some structural skin on the outside of the airplane, and that actually helps um, you know uh, lengthen the life of your foam planes. The second option is to use a contact adhesive. Um, now you may be able to see on sections like this where I've taken big chunks out of it. And I've actually just cut uh, a piece to fit and put on some crazy glue to fix it. Uh, another common area of damage is in this battery holder box. Um, you may be able to see there that there's actually some cut lines in there where it's actually ripped right out or pulled out. And all I've done is come on uh, with my uh, crazy glue and you know, two minutes later you're up and running. Now what I'd like to use uh, is a crazy glue that's a two-part system. So you can use any crazy glue on it. Uh, you do want to be careful with ones that are not foam safe. Um, they will tend to melt and burn uh, and that can lead to problems. So this one here, for example, is made by a company called Loctite. Um, if it's available in your area, heavily recommended. Uh, it is a two-part uh, two process. It is, it is made for all plastics. The, the first part of the process is this activator. Um, and this is really key to the whole process. It is, uh, you can consider it like a flux or uh, a primer, if you will. Um, and all it is is a felt tip pen, but inside here is the super glue activator. Now you can actually, once purchased, there's a lot in here, um, and it just goes on like a felt pen. Uh, you can use it with any crazy glue. So what it does is act as like a primer or a, a spot prep for any plastics that you're gonna crazy glue. Um, so in your repair, take your felt pen, First go over it just as though you were highlighting uh, text on a document or something, it, uh, it goes on really nicely. Key to that is waiting one minute after application. If you don't wait a minute and you go ahead and put the glue right away, it reacts and then it starts to melt and it does some neat smoking tricks that uh, you might want to try on some uh, you know, pieces of foam from the packaging or something, but don't try it on your plane. Third option is the 5 minute epoxy. These are your standard two tubes and, and the purpose of that is to just to meter out the activator that causes the, the actual resin epoxy to set. So um, I'll show you how to use this one because the benefit of this is that you can manipulate and move the parts around once you've stuck them together. Uh, using the crazy glue, you set it, it's done. Now something like this, you know, there's a lot of jagged edges. It has the added complexity of having the four pins that are part of the plastic motor mount, um, you know, which need to be lined up and put back in place. So you can sit here and practice that and try and get it, you know, exactly fit back together. Okay, it made it look really easy there. But, you know, you get it like that with uh, some crazy glue and that's where it will stay. So uh, you don't want that. Uh, so for this repair, uh, I'm going to recommend that you use epoxy, and uh, in this instance, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so the tools you're going to need to do this, a knife is good. Um, you don't necessarily need to use a $100 global paring knife. 
any exacto or something with a very sharp straight edge is going to work nicely. I've got my epoxy here, and I've got a set of toothpicks, uh, and I've got a brush. Take your epoxy speed set glue, take your cap off, and I like to use a little bit of uh, uh, tin foil. Uh, just you know, just dole this out so that it's coming out uh, in the same rate. If you get too much of the applicator, you are going to suffer from a very quick setting epoxy, and you don't want that. So once you've got enough, actually pull back on this to suck it back inside, and that will never prevent it from curing inside of all. And put your cap back on. Once you have your puddle in front of you, take your toothpick. And uh, by the way, you should be doing this in a well-ventilated area. And you're just going to go ahead and mix this in until it's a, a uniform uh, kind of color. In this instance, I'm using an uh, old toothbrush. And it's one of the electric ones that has a vibrate option. I'm going to use that to see if I can jam some of this pretty thick material into the uh, cracks and crevices. Now, it's easy to do this here and spread it all here, but I'm also wanting to get some epoxy behind the wires there, and that's going to be difficult, especially if this is all covered with epoxy and then I'm trying to manipulate it after the fact. So um, open that area first, do the one that's going to be most difficult so that you're not, uh, and you can just do it here or on this side, it doesn't matter, they don't have to be applied on both sides. So I'm going to take my uh, uh, epox professional epoxy applicator, otherwise known as a toothbrush, and really push it into all the cracks and like I said, I'm going to try that vibrate option see if that really gets it in there. And that just push it right in there. Um, now I've taken my my knife, I had a previous uh, tape repair here, um, and that was around the edge. And I've taken my knife and just gone in and uh, removed that tape around there because I don't want uh, it as part of the repair. The epoxy doesn't react well with the packing tape. so. Uh, removed it from the edge wherever it was contacting yeah. and you, you can do both sides, it doesn't matter, but uh, um, you know, if you really want to ensure the best coverage, I suppose, do both sides, do it all over the place. <laughs> Surprisingly, this vibrating toothbrush is actually working quite well to get it uh, everywhere I want it to be. So, okay, so back side is done. Oh, vibrating away. Alright, now I'm going to come in and and get the rest of my epoxy right inside all of those profiles and everywhere. Yeah. Get a good and heavy dollop on there. You want to make sure that it's, like I said, in everywhere. My previous repair didn't work because I just kind of applied it by brushing it over with the toothpick that I had. And that clearly was not effective. Okay, so I've got lots of epoxy on there. Now I can go ahead and line this up, and if it doesn't exactly line up perfect, I can reposition it, manipulate it, move it around. Um, it's not going to be a big deal. It actually does take about 20 minutes for it to really set up to where, um, you know, I would consider it strong and safe to leave on its own. Now, I'm not holding it there, but you may want to uh, support that while doing it. And a good way to do it is just let it sit on its own weight, like that. Brush your epoxy in. After this is all done, I'm going to come after with some uh, packing tape and just apply it to the outside. And again, um, you know, this glue seam is only right here. If you put packing tape, it adds a sideways structural uh, component to the repair, so it's not going to easily bend and break. Any glue um, will bend and break if, it, you know, if it's a weak point in there. Um, it's going to be the point of failure in a crash, so anything you do to increase that structural rigidity is going to help you out. So I've got that put around and I'm just going to push, not too much because foam bends anyway, right, so you don't necessarily want to bend it and uh, have it cure in a bent position, so just enough pressure that the uh, epoxy is contacted and there's lots on here now, I'm really happy about this. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a, a very strong structural repair. So, we'll come back to this uh, when the epoxy is cured and show you how we finish it up. Okay, so we're about 20 minutes later. Our epoxy has set up uh, pretty well. It's not tacky anymore, so it's uh, um, it should be rigid and secure to move on to the next step. So, the next step here, just if you can see that, there's it's, it's pretty rough. Um, like I said before, not that aerodynamics really matter in a, uh, a small plane like that, uh, but just for aesthetics and, and, and 
you know what, making it look uh, decent, we're going to apply some tape around it. Well, I'm going to use a, kind of a, a shingling fashion to make this. Um, that is, I'm going to start from the bottom and work to the top instead of putting a piece of paper or a piece of tape on the top and working to the bottom uh, so my seams aren't exposed. Um, I'm in Vancouver and I do a lot of crazy things like flying in the rain and into water and that sort of thing because there's a lot of it around. So, um, if you are like me and, and uh, um, you know, throw caution to the wind and then take your electronic planes into the into the rain. You may want to look at that. The foam gets very waterlogged if it's got uh, an access point for water to seep into. So, something to consider. So, as I mentioned before, we are just using um, just a regular packing tape. And we're going to take this, and this is where your your flat straight edge comes into play. Just use something that'll give you a good uh, sharp sharp cut, and we're going to. Start on the bottom, and I'm just going to tape from the edge of this plastic retainer for the motor back. The cowl will cover that, but uh, I'm going to use a full width piece of tape now. The reason why I don't just go ahead and wrap it around is because there's a lot of changing angles here. So a wrap this way is then going to turn the tape that way and a wrap back, um, which is going to mean you're not going to get a smooth wrap around. So um, a little bit of overlap is okay um, if you're doing it in sections like this because it's, it's not going to be critical. Uh, over the small length of this tape uh, where the angle goes. So just biting it down there and smoothing it front to back and around the curves and that gives us our smooth point there. Like I said, sealing out uh, any possible water intrusion if you're a rain flyer like me. And then going from the bottom to the top gives us a shingling effect where we are covered for uh, the rain coming from any angle, and uh, you might not think it a, it a really important thing, but uh, with the prop spinning and pushing rain, it does it does push quite a, de a large deal of rain with force through that pot, through the prop, sorry, so um, it is a good idea to do this if you're a rain flyer. Okay, and we'll smooth it back, look as nice as possible. We have overlapped it onto that bottom tape. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Again, the sharp knife helps in this instance. So, making sure to overlap. Previous tape in a shingle type fashion. So we cleared up that crack so our repair is pretty well watertight. And uh, this is going to be a, a thinner, a thinner section. Uh, but I want it to be longer to go around and wrap because that's you know where the rain's going to be hitting at speed. And if I can find the end of my tape here. Alright, so we're going to have a tape that's like that big. So, I'm going to cut it there, and then I'm going to cut it lengthwise. Give me a little more length, and to overlap both of the other pieces of tape on the sides, and I'm just going to cut it there, and put it around. So that has created an area. Now, if you're like me, and just covered up your uh, act eye, just cut it around it with your very sharp knife and just pull off the excess tape. You don't want to cover that up. That is if you fly with the act. And that <coughs> is it. So this is now fairly structural. The tape helps with that for the side to side bending. Um, we haven't uh, damaged the integrity or the ability uh, to pull this plastic cap off if we wanted to replace it with just another uh, blank body, or fuselage, I should say. And uh, we should have given ourselves a light enough and strong enough job that this will just continue to fly and have fun in the air. Uh, look for my other videos. Lots of other repair jobs coming as I crash this into buildings and, and ground alike. Uh, thanks for watching.